Howdy. Welcome to episode 96 of Yarn of Order. Put my little book in front of myself so I can't see. If I didn't, I would be staring at myself, which is fine. Staring at oneself needs to occur on occasion. But yeah. I am wearing my sugared violets before I forget. Um, I know that I'm getting blasted out by the light, but that is a nice, lovely lime green. I blocked it. I blocked it, and it's gorgeous. Look at that. And I knit this out of my loop, self-striping back in the picnic colorway, I believe. I love how the transitions actually almost line up perfectly. Almost! Like, there's one row right here where it doesn't, but aside from that, we're all good. Meow. And Petrie just had food, but she uh, wants to come and say hi anyway. So. Hi. It is January something. I think it's the 27th. 2013. Is it the 27th? I think it's the 27th. Anywho. 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 Let's talk about, let's share today. Today on episode 96. One sec. Petrie is still kind of demanding, but there. That seems to have helped our speed. Got to ignore that for right now. Okay. Finished objects. I have some. Not as many as I'd like, but it was a crazy week. First off the top, I have a 24-inch snuggle. 24. It's not 24 long, I think it's 15 long, but like seriously, I could block it out to 24, whatever. Whatever. There are no snuggle police, and I ran out of yarn. I ran out of yarn right there. Right there. Right there. So that was kind of awesome. Uh, this is knit out of the Shetland Chunky by Lady Fair Eaton. So like, I mean, that's older than me. And the green, gray camo, it's a camo green, uh, is, and I know you can, it looks gray to me right now, but I know it's green. Um, it looks gray on the screen. It actually is greenish. It's a greenish gray. You know what I mean. It's the color of camouflage. Uh, it is Red Heart Super Saber leftovers. So that's another snuggle. And uh, I'm going to start another one with the grandmother, grandma's favorite dishcloth pattern like I saw on uh, Knitting in Circles. I thought that was awesome. Uh, so I'm going to do that with my next set. And I'm just going to keep double stranding because it's quick and it's easy. And yeah. Okay, other finished objects? I have other finished objects. It's 1.08 in the afternoon. This won't be posted till like midnight, which is funny because that's how slow my internet is. But whatever. Um, yeah, third pot of coffee, not pot, cup, cup, cup of coffee. Sadie needs more coffee. Actually, Sadie needs to eat is what she needs to do, because I forgot to eat most of yesterday, and then I'm an idiot. And I'm mumbling into my cup. And apparently a cat already got with these. It's okay, I have lint brushes for a reason. I finished two cupcakes. These are wedding favors. This one's screwed up. Looks kind of like a mushroom. I misread the pattern. It's the free pattern. It's the uh, Jane Knits hat by Whip Insanity, which was made for Karen's wedding, and um, I'm just kind of stealing it. Uh, we, we have a cap. I didn't understand that relatives and well-wishers would come out of the woodwork and think, hey, Las Vegas, free trip. It's not actually a free trip. They have to get there, but they're like, hey, a reason to go to Las Vegas. Yeah, no. Uh, it's all good. We're still, I think we still have two so two seats? Two seats. I'm not sure. But we, we booked a 20. The 20 was the lowest you could book. And uh, we're like, there's no way we're going to fit 20. We've got maybe 10. Anywho, each person who comes gets wedding favors. And these are going to be part of the wedding favors. I'm making little baggies. Um, talking to Dawn, she's going to do up some stuff for uh, those, and um, 
they're going to get little cupcakes little steampunk cupcakes so this one is out of Patton's Croy that's the black and the top is Volmice and the pattern is free so I'm not giving any way, uh, giving away anything when I say when it says K1 P1 12 times it does not mean 12 rounds but apparently at midnight that's what my head heard and I made it too long and then I was like screw it I'm not ripping back this is just gonna be one demented mushroom-esque one so mom really likes it and then the second one which was knit to the pattern and actually worked out is the bottom half is Cascade Heritage in gray. It's a numbered colorway and the top part as you may it looks familiar it's leftovers from the Boromir sock which was done out of Wandering Cat yarns in their Twinkle Cat base the Boogie Nights colorway so it's got a little bit of Stellina poking out there and then I sewed little gears on. So each person is going to get two of these and actually mom's going to embroider our initials on the bottoms. So it's going to say PS or SP. So we're either salt and pepper or we're postscript. But either way, it's going to be awesome. Cupcakes. So I just need to knit 38 more of these and sew cogs on the top. Yeah, awesome. But they're cute and I'm going to enjoy it. And really, I think I actually only need to knit 36 because we're counted in the 20. I don't know. I'll get back to you on that. How's that? Is that awesome? They're so cute, though. So cute. I'm not going to screw up any more, though. But I think Mom wants this one. She's like, I like it. Of course, Partner in Crime was all, it looks like a mushroom. This one looks a little more like a cupcake. It's a complete My Little Ponies reference. Uh, <laughs> that's right. We are geeky and we are lame. Oh no! Oh no! Cupcake Renegade! Renegade! Get back here. Tried to put it over here and it rolled off the desk. Stay on the desk. They're a little top heavy. I'm okay with that. Um, so those were my finished objects. I did, before I show you my works in progress, I'll show you my finished spinning. <laughs> I was smart. I wrapped the ball band around the finished spinning when I was done because I haven't set the twist, but I can set the twist later and I will tell you why in miscellany. This is Highland Handmaid's White Spruce Top in the colorway Loki's Whim. It's four ounces of superwash merino, non-felting, because you know I love this, this little stickery thing. They're on, I think they're, they're on every fiber I've ever gotten from her and I adore them. I think they're genius, like Heather is. So I got a three ply, it's probably gonna bloom. It's gonna be a sport or a little heavier than a sport. It's thick and thin throughout. I did not, I was not as consistent as I would have liked, but for a first time three ply and the fact that my wheel is, my wheel, um, that's fine with me. Uh, let's see if I can spread these out for you. Like, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a worsted DK. Not 100% sure, but there's the, the individuals. I love what happens when you do a three ply and the colors that it creates. Because in some spots, they do all come together. All of the colors come together. Like right here, you can see a lot of the limey green coming through. I'm not sure if you can, but this bright yellowy limey green, it meets up really nicely. I think this is going to knit up gorgeously. I totally loved it, and as soon as I upgrade my wheel or get like a lace flyer, I will. Although I am going to try the Fat Squirrel Speaks recommended uh, zigzagging across for the pull, and I've heard about it, so maybe I need to give that a shot. However, I won't be spinning until sometime tomorrow. Probably, probably, probably stay tuned. <clears throat> so this is 262 yards of a three ply out of four ounces. I don't think that's that bad. Like I said, it's probably, it's everywhere from a sport to DK to a worsted. Clearly there's no bulky going on in here, but it is thicker. And in some spots I really kind of screwed the pooch, but that's okay. Because, like right here, this, this one, this one. 
I know I was having issues there. Hold on. And we're back. So, I'm just going to give up looking at the numbers and stuff because it bugs me. <clears throat> works in progress, works in progress. What have I worked on? I've worked on stuff. I've worked on stuff in the bird like bags bag. So you know this is my check-in for the Lord of the Rings sock knit along. As you recall, I have a hippo. Hey, and I've got to thinking about that. And hippo ends with long O, but I'm okay with that because it's a word. I think it's acronyms. Because I can't say SCA without thinking that's wrong, so I have to say Society for Creative Anachronism. Despite the fact that saying Society for Creative Anachronism is very long, I prefer saying Society to, of Creative Anachronism as a verse to the SCA. So, I just, and, and proper words can end in long vowels. I have issues. Is, yes, Sadie, we know you have issues. But you still love me. Okay, so the second Gandalf sock has had some progress. As you saw last week, I was just starting the repeat, the chart repeat. I have finished almost a chart repeat. I'm moving into the finishing of the first chart repeat. Um, there are three chart repeats, and then I do the heel. I am hoping to finish this on time now. I was gonna, I was gonna bust, bust through that wall and get it done. When, let's not joke ourselves, shall we? Let's. Okay. <clears throat> I'm Flemmy. I'm Flemmy. Sue, Carrie, two tangle skeins. Just want to say congratulations on 300 members. And uh, I, I share your pain. This week it was minus 35, minus 38, minus 40. So, yeah. Cold snap! It's currently a balmy minus 15. So, I'll take it. I'll take it. We're expected to get back down by Wednesday. Woo! And I'm sipping. And I'm slurping because I'm wearing a lip ring and I'm trying to sip out of my traveler cup without actually having the lid on. And, and why, you may ask? Because all of my cups are dirty. If you can't smell that I'm alluding to all kinds of things, then you'll just have to wait. Okay, what else did I work on? I worked on the Cable of Monstrosity. I didn't finish a panel though. Two in the morning, I was like, I am done. I am not finishing this panel. I think I have 10 rows and some stockinette left. On panel three, the third panel of B, B being the biggest friggin' panel there is. But after I'm done this panel B, I will, uh, I will have one more. But I'll get to knit some other things in between as opposed to knitting three of them in a row. So there you have it. Uh, it's on the Millward five and a half millimeter needles, made in England. Millward. Seriously, someone should have a needle company that's just called Millward because it's fun to say. I know Chiagu and Haya Haya are fun to say, but seriously, Millward. Just say it. Just say it out loud for me. See, it's fun. Millward. Millward. Okay. Verbiage is not my strong suit today. And the cabled monstrosity is being done out of the Patton's Canadian Tweeds. It's probably very discontinued. I'm pretty sure this predates my existence in this world. Uh, three and a half ounce balls. It was done out by Coates Patton, Toronto, made in Canada. 96% acrylic, 4% viscous. Gives you a little sproying. It's a little sproying. A little less sproying. But machine washable and dryable. 100%. I'm doing it in white and tan. And once I finish panel A through F, or yeah, F, A through F of the third one, I will sew the second one together, which will be fine, except that I have to lengthen one of the cables. Blah, 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 blah. Anywho, anywho. Gonna be working on this and snuggles this week, I suspect, because I am in a, I wanna get things off the needles mood. February 1st, starting the uh, color affection show with uh, my darling Dawn, darling Dawn, of the Wolf Farms podcast. See you Dawn, making us accountable to ourselves. 
<clears throat> Mostly because I'm going to need something achingly uh, boring. Hold on a sec. No, seriously, I have to pause you yet again because I forgot to bring a work in project progress. Hold on. Okay. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I had, to, I had to run off and get this. My bad Amy bag. Um, which was in my purse. With my purse knitting, go figure. And in the bad Amy project bag. On my Knit Picks 2.5 millimeter needles. Over 64 stitches is my post yarn so stripey sock. I've gotten a little further. I'm going to go at least seven inches before I put my afterthought heel in. Still loving it, still adoring it, still wishing I had more time to knit on it. I know it's grown at least two stripes since last week, so it's getting there. It's getting there. I'm okay with that. Really, really I am. I am. And uh, I'd like to play a little bit of the blame game. Everyone, all my other fellow podcasters, are doing sweaters. They're trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me with the sweaters. Aside from the fact that I have like no sweater quantities of yarn, which will be remedied when I move. I picked up a pattern that I was working on for a while and then threw down for a bit because I was sidetracked. And that is the Chamborshin or Chamberkin. I'm not, I don't, I'm not even going to try and say it. By Ruth Garcia Alcanted of Rock and Pearl. It's available on Ravelry. It is a lacy pullover with a hood and a deep V. The finished bust sizes start at 30 and a quarter inch and go up to 60 and three quarter inches. Looking at my big friends. My big friends, girls, you know. You know when you can be in the 50s and still fall in the middle of the spectrum, it's a good pattern. Uh, they do recommend minimal ease, one inch negative. So, um, I got things I want to hide, like a little junk in my trunk. So, I went with the one that was pretty much spot on. I'm gonna block it to be a little bit baggy. I don't want it to be tight. I don't. I don't intend to wear it like this woman here, who's a, like size two, and more power to you if you're a size two. I am not a size two, and my tummy is not that flat. My breasts are not that small. So I am making sure that, and you change your needle size to ch to affect your to affect your gauge, which is awesome. But uh, suiting it to have negative ease on my boob. Making sure it isn't too close to the body around the tire track. Um, yeah. I did add some length. I'm a long torso lady, so I added some length. I adjusted the pattern as, as required. So, having said all that, now I'll put it all away. I have been knitting on the little bugger. Last time you saw it. Excuse me, Bebo. Excuse me. Visuals. Can I have my knitting? Bebo's laying on the knitting which is very cute and sweet, but um, not right now. Last time you saw it, I had finished the back and put it on stitch holders. And of course it's lace, so it's gonna like and So I'm not too worried about like it looking like a scrunched up ball of something that my cats have uh, gifted me. So the last time you saw it, I had most of this bottom portion done. I got up to where you, this is where the front V goes, and I got the right front done. I am ready to start the left front. Ish. I say ish, that's way too high for my, <clears throat> like that. It's actually going to be longer, but whatever. I think it'll be cute. I think it will accentuate the ladies, which is what I was going for with this while hiding some uh, trouble spots. And being warm. Warm is good. I am using my Flancer stitch markers. I've got my little cat paw one. And of course, there will be sets of stitch markers from the lovely Flancers. 
uh, any uh, snuggles prize threads or giveaways snuggle prize snuggle prizes will they're stitch markers okay just had to say that um, I anticipate getting the left front done tonight and then I just have the sleeves and the the hood and the placket sleeves hood placket and uh, that doesn't seem that much to me. I've pretty much memorized the pattern, so it's good to go on that front. It is being knit out of stuff I got from my aunt. It's a Patton's Croy 4 ply for Bryn. Again, probably older than me. It is, uh, according to the bag it was in, it's the sea glass colorway. It's 85% wool, 15% nylon, machine wash, cool, machine dry, low heat. And I like that about it because it's not, it's, it feels like a workhorse sock yarn. I can put it next to my skin, it's not going to bug me. And I can throw it in the washer or the dryer to tighten it up or whatever. And quite frankly, I have a problem knitting a large garment out of wool that I then have to like take care of. I don't mind if I like have to wash it and stuff, but seriously... The cardigans or pullovers or whatever that I've knit, the ones that I can throw in the wash and then lay flat to dry, usually get more wear because I'm sloppy. I get stuff places. Seriously, crumb catcher, right here. It ends up in my bra, but there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm a sloppy person. <laughs> And I, and you get it on the wool and then you're freaked out and like, I just, I don't want to have to deal with that. <laughs> so there you have it. That's, that's my thing. That's my thing for you. My hang up. And now to entice you, oh, to entice you. Uh, aside from the fact that if you uh, knit a 36 by 36 and you submit it into the Knit and Wolf podcast, she'll give you two entries instead of one. You can put it in the regular thread, the, the basic snuggles thread, and then after you've done that, you go over to the big snuggle thread and you post just your big snuggle because that's only for big snuggles and it runs in tandem with the random on. But you may be wondering, Sadie, why would I do all that work? That seems a lot of work to be putting everything everywhere. Well, let me tell you why. We have two prizes for the Big Snuggles, donated by a gorgeously wonderful anonymous friend of the podcast. And uh, one of those prizes is Volmice. It is the twin 80% Merino Superwash, 20% PA, and Gefarp, semi solid, 150 grams, uh, 510 yards in Hertzblut. It's a gorgeous red. I'm not taking it out because I don't want to get cat fur all over it, but it is a gorgeous red. It's Volmice. Come on. I don't even need to say that. And I love it when things come in bags because then I don't have to worry about getting them furry. The other thing that will be going up in that, proje in that project bag, in that thread, is a project bag. It has gorgeous little animals. Gorgeous little animals. I'll take it out so I can show you, but then I'm putting it back in the bag. So these will be drawn randomly to maximize our prize winners. It is a lovely bag. It is fully lined with the cutest little paw print fabric that is completely coordinated to the outside, which has puppies and kitties and fishies and bunnies and tigers and turtles. Oh my. And it's a good size. It's a good height. It's a good size. I would say you could use, a sh use it for a shawl or a sock. Um, it's bigger than my Bad Amy bag, uh, comparatively a little bit smaller than a medium knitting's my bag bag, which keeps the chamberchin or chambersheen or whatever and is full of cat fur because Petrie's been sleeping with it, but it keeps all of my spare balls. And we love knitting's my bag. So thank you to our anonymous donor and keep those 36 by 36 is coming. You can also put them in any other podcaster's threads, like there's um, Knittables, uh, Dragonfly Source kicking some butt right now. Way to go, Vicky. Uh, the Fiberista Files and Highland, or the Fi and Highland Handmade, same person. Mm. 
Fiberista Files and Any on the Fly are uh, currently battling it out. I know JD's got a thread over at Twisted Strands. Um, Steve doesn't have time this year, which is kind of sad, but I'll knit a couple snuggles in in honor of his, uh, his poopy that he lost. And, uh, yeah. Diane Knittables. Have I said her already? Who else? Fat Squirrel squeak, Squeaks. The Fat Squirrel Squeaks. Squirrels do squeak, but she speaks when she's online. Uh, is going to get in on that. Knitting in Circles is in on that. So, yay. And, of course, Wolf Photo, who is... Uh, Dawn's husband. You'll see him on knitting the uh, Wolf Farms podcast. He started knitting and he knit a snuggle or crocheted a snuggle and it was very fast. So way to go James. Kicking butt. I was entertained. I was entertained. I really hope he wouldn't surprise because that would just be awesome. Like your first crochet project. It's a charity item and you win something. That would be cool. So that is the project bag which is the second prize for the big snuggle threat. And of course you can also win randomly in the big thread, the full thread. Prizes will be drawn mid-March. I'd like to say a thank you to Aunt Nisi who sent me the Cabalina pattern, which is an awesome pattern and I look forward to knitting it. It's out of DK yarn. I didn't bring my iPad and I'm not pausing you again. Uh, go have a peek at it. It's Cabalina by Jennifer Miller or the Otter Moon Designs. Uh, it's an empire wasted cabled, like the cables flare out to your body and then it's empire, wa umpire, umpire, empire, whatever. The waist is directly under your girls. And you can have a cap sleeve or you can have a full length sleeve or three quarter sleeve. I think I'll do it in a full sleeve because that's how I roll. Or maybe a three quarter. I don't like the cap. I tend not to like cat sleeves for the same reason that uh, Amy Beth doesn't, because they go bloop. It's like, dude, I do not need to add extra bulk right there, just a bloop. I don't wear shoulder pads, I'm not Lady Gaga here. So I'll probably take it to a three quarter, which will make me more comfortable, and then I can use it for work. <sighs> Miscellaneous. Wanted to show you something awesome that I got. I got this doesn't look like much. Curie Goners, this could revolutionize your world. This is called the Kiena, uh, Kiena Cup. It's produced by Kiena.com. They're a Canadian company. They're out of Calgary. Whatever. You can buy it on Amazon. Or you can buy it elsewhere for way cheaper. Uh, it's also sold at Bath Body Works and stuff. Uh, Kiena. But basically the premise is this. This acts as a K-cup. And you can put Kiana pods in it. I bought some Kiana pods. I bought the Highland Grog. Actually, technically my mother bought me Highland Grog, which is awesome. I also got the Mocha Java, and they're both good. I'm currently sipping away at the Mocha Java. But basically, any of the Sun Cafe Brewer ones that are significantly cheaper than K-Cups. Sun Cafe is more expensive, and it really doesn't brew a very big cup. But you can brew a big cup in a Keurig using these pods by getting the adapter. So you get them in here. And they're basically like little tea bags. And you pinch, pinch, push into here, drop this in like a K cup, and then you just flip it open when you're done. Pull out the cup, pull out the, the packet, and you can put a new packet in and just keep going. Now, why am I saying this? Aside, well, and it, I really could care less that it's made in Canada, but if you're in Canada and you live anywhere near where you can get one of these, and you have a Keurig, the savings is insane. At Hickory and Tweed, you can get a box of 50 for $16. That's 50 cups of coffee. And I have to say, the Highland Grog, although Partner in Crime was a little uh, disturbed by the use of the term grog, it actually comes out more of a butter rum. It's a buttery, spicy flavored coffee, and you can really, like, when it comes out, it smells like the Southern Butter Pecan International Delight Creamer. It's awesome. The 100% Colombian tastes like a regular Colombian. I don't like Colombian coffees. I tend to like the Costa Ricans, or the, I go dark. I don't, I don't know why. But, uh, if you're looking for, they also have a Canadian Maple, Cafe Mocha, Backpackers Brew, Mountain Grizzly. 
There's a bunch of different ones. It was $8 for 18 which in Canada is really good because I pay way more money. I think you get double the amount of Canapods per the amount you would spend on a Keurig K-cup. And if you're eco-friendly, it's bio, it, like this is non, this is BPA, BPA free, uh, dishwasher safe, and the pods are biodegradable. There's no plastic involved except for the plastic container, which is recyclable. So uh, apparently somewhere in Calgary, they're really good at that. Took me a couple tries to figure it out. I thought you had to like take the piece out like you do with the my, my cup or whatever, but you don't. You use this as a actual K cup and you poink. But oh my God, made life easier, tastes marvelous. Check it out if you want to save yourself some cash. And you have a Keurig. Like, I mean, you can mix and match and just do these half of the time. Like, I use the MyK, I use Keurig cups, and I now I'm using these. And I'm probably going to order, like, 100 bucks of coffee uh, before I leave Canada. Because you can get the 50 packs in Canada, but you can't get them in the States. But they're 8 bucks a box in the States. So really, like, I mean, 8 bucks for 18 That's hard to do. Usually up here you'll pay twelve ninety nine for a box of eighteen K cups, and let's not even talk about Starbucks. Usually that's insane, unless you find a good sale. I'm good at finding good sales. Anywho, I drink a lot of coffee. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I just wanted to say if you're into the Keurig, and if you live in Canada, like all five of you that live in Canada, you should try it out because it is significantly cheaper for us. Uh, it's carried at a host of Canadian stores. I got mine at Home Hardware. Seriously. Home Hardware in Regina. Totally worth it. Now the miscellany that everybody's been waiting for. Have a sip. The house sold! <laughs> I know you've been waiting. You've been waiting the entire show for me to say that. The house sold. On Thursday, I was... Submitted an offer. It was 9 o'clock at night. I was tired. Uh, I accepted the offer. The conditions get removed on January 31st. The possession date is March 1st. And I'm about ready to lose my mind. Uh, the big plan is to work until mid-February. <clears throat> Gonna give my notice so that I'm out of there mid-February so I can focus on getting everything ready for the last two weeks. Um, there will be a delay in the Snuggles prize draw. It will probably be mid-March. Podcasts may become sparse during the month of February as I decompress an entire house and get my three-page to-do list done. However, household, and I get to move, and I get to leave, and I get to be where I need to be right now. It's going to be awesome. I'm ready to start the next part of my life, the better part of my life. Um, I'll miss my family, not going to lie. But, uh, yeah, house sold. And on top of the house selling, really, how can you back that up? On top of the house selling, I scored a free first row ticket to Front Row Center to the tragically hit playing in Regina. It's kind of last minute, but I ended up going Friday night. It was an awesome show. Uh, I've come to the decision that my favorite song is now completely ruined because of the partner in crime. Yeah. Marrying a guy in the Navy will probably make you dislike the song Nautical Disaster. Go figure. Former favorite song. Like, aw, I'm so sad. Uh, Gord Downey, of course, was in his glory rocking the fedora. Um, they were filming it. I think they're going to release it on a DVD. I think they're releasing this tour on a DVD like that night in Toronto, which they did few records back. Um, the other interesting thing was Paul Lingua, who is the backup singer and the harmony guitarist, got to sing a couple verses of Wheat Kings, which is never heard of. That was kind of mind-blowing. They did do all the standards, all the ones that everybody loves. Um, it was an amazing night. It was nice to see the guys. They're, they're a great... They're a great Canadian band, and if you haven't heard of them, then I don't know where you live under a rock. Quite frankly, everybody knows who the Tragically Hip are. 
I'll put some pictures I took during the show uh, at the end of the podcast, just so you get a, a taste of what my view was like. It was pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah. So, how sold. I'm moving March 1st. I'm moving March 1st. I'm moving March 1st. I'm moving, 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 moving. You like my little dance? Kind of bordered on the Numa Numa dance, didn't it? You know, the one with the, uh. Yeah, don't make me do that. Don't. I just did. But I could do it again. But I'm not gonna. Our music this week is from a California-based band. They're out of L.A. They only have an EP, but they've just signed to Elektra Records. I heard them while I was listening to KEXP. Because here in Saskatchewan, we have crap radio. So I listen to a radio station from Seattle. Go figure. Uh, their name is Kitten. The song I heard was G Pound, and quite frankly, the EP is awesome. There's what five or four or five or six songs. Um, definitely check them out. I will post them in the YouTube at, or the YouTube's in the show notes as always. This has been a really long and convoluted episode, and I apologize. For that. Well, station identification. I am Blue Ruin on Ravelry. We shoot stars on Plurk. Come join the Arniverus group. We are over 500 members. There will be a prize drawing probably April. Uh, related to that, if we hit 600, I'll uh, do extra prizes. Um, if you're entering the Snuggles, please do join the group. And podcasters, please do remind your people to join the group. Uh, I hate having to poke people and say, you're a guest in the group. You aren't eligible to win unless you join the group. I feel like a douche. And... Yeah, that's everything for this week. I hope to see you next week. I don't see why I wouldn't. Uh, I may be losing my mind, but hey, March 1st, baby, I'm coming to a state near you.